أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين حبيب إله العالمين أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد وعلى أهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين صلى الله عليك يا رسول الله صلى الله عليك وعلى أهل بيتك المظلومين صلى الله عليك يا أبا عبد الله يا رحمة الله الواسعة ويا باب نجاة الأمة ويا عبرة كل مؤمن ومؤمنة يا ليتنا كنا معكم سادتي فنفوز فوزا عظيما أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ويقولون لولا أنزلت ويقولون لولا أنزل عليه آية من ربه فقل إنما الغيب لله فانتظروا إني معكم من المنتظرين صلوا على محمد وآل محمد When the Prophet صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم began to deliver the message, the greatest miracle that he brought to the people was undoubtedly the Qur'an. That is the miracle of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. However, some of the mushrikeen, some of the non-believers refused to accept the Qur'an because if they accept the Qur'an, that means that they would have to accept the message of the Prophet. And their egos kept them from following the Prophet, even though they knew he was with the Haqq. They knew that he was right. And everything that he says is truthful. So they asked the Prophet for another ayah. They asked the Prophet for another sign. So Allah says in the Qur'an, وَيَقُولُونَ لَوْ لَا أُنزِلَ عَلَيْهِ آيَةٌ مِّنْ رَبِّهِ They say, we want to see another sign. We want to see something that will strengthen our faith. We want to see something that will make us believe and strengthen the proof of the Qur'an. So then Allah says to the Prophet to tell them, فَقُلْ إِنَّمَا الْغَيْبُ لِلَّهِ فَانْتَظِرُوا إِنِّي مَعَكُمْ مِنَ الْمُنْتَظِرِينَ The Qur'an tells the Prophet to tell them that ghayb, the unseen, belongs to Allah. So wait, and I am with you waiting for the ghayb. I am with you waiting for a sign to prove the Qur'an, to strengthen the proof of the Qur'an, to strengthen the validity of the Qur'an. Now, the Mufassireen of the Qur'an, scholars of Tafsir, they are analyzing what is this ghayb that the Prophet is referring to? What is this ghayb that the Prophet is waiting for? فَانْتَظِرُوا إِنِّي مَعَكُمْ مِنَ الْمُنْتَظِرِينَ What is the Prophet waiting for to strengthen the proof and validify his message, further validify his message? Some scholars say this verse is referring to the Day of Judgment. 
the day of judgment, when it happens, then that day everyone will be certain that Rasulullah was right and the Quran was right and it will validify the message of the Prophet. This is one opinion. However, according to the hadith of Imam al-Sadiq alayhi salam, the sixth Imam of Ahl al-Bayt, sallu ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. He says the ghayb that the Prophet is waiting for and he tells people to wait for and that is the ghayb, the unseen that will validify the whole message of the Prophet and further strengthen the message of the Prophet is Imam al-Hujjah, Allah Ta'ala, Farajahu al-Sharif, the savior of humanity. <laughs> so here, Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wa just like you and I, he was also waiting for the Imam. He was also waiting for the savior of humanity. Because this is a belief that we have as Muslims and we have as followers of the Ahlul Bayt that at the end of time the earth will be inherited by the righteous. At the end of time the Khalifa of Allah will rule this earth, the whole earth. And of course this is not something that only we believe, the followers of the Ahlul Bayt. This is not something that only the Muslims believe. This is a universal belief system that you find the religions and the faiths before the religion of Islam, they also accepted this. Allah says in the Quran, وَنُرِيدُ أَن نَمُنَّ عَلَى الَّذِينَ اسْتُضْعِفُوا فِي الْأَرْضِ وَنَجْعَلَهُمْ أَئِمَّةً وَنَجْعَلَهُمُ الْوَارِثِينَ We shall bestow a favor, namun, minna. وَنُرِيدُ أَن نَمُنَّ عَلَى الَّذِينَ اسْتُضْعِفُوا فِي الْأَرْضِ We shall bestow a favor upon those who are oppressed in the land. And what? وَنَجْعَلَهُمْ أَئِمَّةً وَنَجْعَلَهُمُ الْوَارِثِينَ We shall make them the imams, the leaders, and we shall make them the inheritors of the earth. Has it ever happened in the history of mankind that this whole earth as a whole has been inherited by the righteous? This has never happened. Not even during the time of Rasulullah. During the time of Rasulullah, Rasulullah controlled only the area of Hijaz. During the time of Amir al-Mu'mineen, he ruled a little bit larger area. But it's never been in the history of this universe that this whole earth had been inherited by the righteous. This whole earth has been ruled by the Khalifa of Allah. So that means this is a day that is yet to come. Because this is the promise of Allah. Allah says in the Quran, وَلَقَدْ كَتَبْنَا فِي الزَّبُورِ مِنْ بَعْدِ الذِّكْرِ This is not only something that is written in the Quran. We believe in Imam al-Mahdi. This is not just something that only the Muslims believe in. وَلَقَدْ كَتَبْنَا فِي الزَّبُورِ مِنْ بَعْدِ الذِّكْرِ أَنَّ الْأَرْضَ يَرِثُهَا عِبَادِيَ الصَّالِحُونَ We wrote in the Zabur, in the Psalms of David, من بعد الذكر, after the dhikr, after the books that speak about Allah and mention Allah, what has been written? أَنَّ الْأَرْضَ يَرِثُهَا عِبَادِيَ الصَّالِحُونَ That this earth shall be inherited by the righteous. So you see that this is a universal belief system. All believe in this. The Christians, the Jews, the Muslims, all Muslims. Yes, there are a few points of disagreement, few minor issues of disagreement. For example, the Jews, they say we are waiting for the Messiah to come. He will be the one who will bring, establish justice and peace on earth after it has been filled with oppression. The Christians, they say the Messiah is Isa alayhi salam. He is the Messiah who, we are, who they are also waiting for. And we, the Muslims, we say yes. We are going to see the Messiah who is Isa. And he is going to come at the end of time with the Imam of our time. 
He is going to come with the Imam, the leader who will establish justice on earth after it has been filled with oppression and tyranny. And this is the wa'd of Allah. This is the promise of Allah. Allah does not break His promise. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi tells the Muslims, كَيْفَ أَنْتُمْ كَيْفَ أَنْتُمْ إِذَا نَزَلَ بْنُ مَرْيَمْ وَإِمَامُكُمْ مِنْكُمْ How are you? He tells his companions, how would you be if the son of Maryam comes down? Jesus descends once again for the second coming and the Imam, the one who will lead the prayer, the one who even Isa will pray behind this person is from you, the Muslims. So Muslims all believe that Jesus will come as the Messiah, as the Messiah, and along with him will be Imam al-Hujjah. And once Jesus, Isa, believes in Imam al-Mahdi and prays behind Imam al-Mahdi, then all of them who see him as the Messiah, the Jews, they will believe in Imam al-Mahdi. And the ones who accept Jesus as the Messiah, the Christians, they will also accept Imam al-Mahdi. And the Muslims who will see their Imam leading the prayer, they will also be with their Imam. This is the promise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, of course, with, within the Muslim school of thought, within the Islamic religion, there are also some minor differences. The only difference between we, the followers of the Ahlul Bayt, and the Sunni school of thought is that we believe the Imam was born. He was born on the 15th of Sha'ban in year 255 after Hijrah. And they say he is not born yet. This is savior at the end of time. That a savior will come and establish justice. This is unanimously accepted, not only amongst the Muslims, but also amongst other religions as well. But we believe that the Imam was born. And we insist on this. On the 15th of Sha'ban, the Imam was born through a miraculous way. <coughs> Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala preserved his life. Allah prolonged his life. And there's nothing wrong with believing in that. If you believe in the Qur'an, if you accept the Qur'an, and if you accept the stories of the prophets in the Qur'an, then why is it hard to believe in Imam al-Mahdi? Don't we believe of the, the prophets in the Qur'an? Imam al-Sadiq alayhi salam he says, Allah chose for our Qa'im. Allah chose for him three features that he chose for the prophets of Allah. The first is that he hid his birth. The birth of Imam al-Mahdi was a hidden birth. It was a concealed birth where the authorities, the government, they had spies in the house of Imam al-Hasan al-Askari because they knew that he is the 11th Imam and after him is going to be the 12th Imam that Rasulullah spoke about that all Muslims know about. The 12th from Quraysh, the 12th from the children of, from the children of Fatima. He is the one who is going to be the Al-Mahdi. He is the awaited savior. So they had spies in the house of Imam al-Hasan al-Askari. But Allah hid the pregnancy of the mother, Narjas, the mother of Imam al-Hujjah. Allah hid her pregnancy. Which prophet of Allah did Allah hide his mother's pregnancy? <coughs> prophet Musa alayhi salam. Because Fir'aun was also killing any child from the Israelites because he had received prophecy that one children from the Israelites is going to come and it's going to be one of those children that's going to be the, is going to be the cause of the demise of the government of Fir'aun. So he began to slaughter all of the children. As soon as a lady from the Israelites, she gives birth, they would take her child and they would slaughter her child. Allah hid the pregnancy of Musa the mother of Musa, and same with Imam Al-Hujjah. Then Imam Al-Sadiq says, and Allah prolonged the life of Imam Al-Hujjah, just like he prolonged the life of which prophet in the Quran? Which prophet had a very long life? Prophet Nuh alayhi salam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that Prophet Nuh had a very long life. Allah says he was with his people 
for centuries. This is mentioned in the Quran. So why is it that some Muslims accept the Quran with, when it comes to Prophet Nuh but refuse to accept it when it comes to the Savior of mankind who Rasulullah spoke about, who all of the Prophets spoke about, who all of the Imams spoke about, who the Quran speaks about. Why is it hard to accept that? And the third, the Imam says Allah placed our Qa'im in a state of ghaybah, in a state of occultation, just like he placed Prophet Isa in an occultation. Is Jesus dead or alive? Isa is alive. But Isa is hidden from the eyes. Isa, Allah raised him to preserve his life, to protect his life. And the same thing happened with the Imam of our time. So Allah says in the Quran, one day, the deen al-haq, one day the rightful religion, the religion of Allah. Today, you find there's confusion. You find there's only one group of people that's following 100% on the haq. People, everyone doing their own thing. But then, Allah says that there will come a day where the whole earth will be inherited by the righteous. That the whole earth will be ruled by the mu'mineen. And that hasn't happened yet. That will happen with the faraj of the imam of our time. So, my dear brothers and sisters, now we are in a time of ghaybah. We are in the time of occultation. The imam was born year 255 after hijrah. Year 260, when the Imam was five years old, Imam al Hassan al Askari was poisoned. Imam al Hassan al Askari was poisoned by the government. Also, at a young age, the Imam passed away. And that is when the Imamah of Imam al Hujjah began, at the age of five. And also, this is no surprise to us. Doesn't Allah speak about Yahya? Yahya wa atainahu al hukma sabiya. He was a sabi. He was a boy when he was a prophet of Allah. Doesn't Allah speak about Isa, Jesus, who was a, in the cradle? He was an infant. Wasn't he a prophet of Allah according to the Quran? So why is it hard to believe that there was an imam who was young, an imam who was five years old? And this was not a surprise for people at that time because Imam al-Jawad was also an Imam when he was seven years old. Imam al-Hadi was also an Imam before ten years old. So within the Shia community at that time, it was very normal. It was very accepted. They had seen the knowledge of Imam al-Jawad. They had seen the knowledge of Imam al-Hadi. So when they came and they told them Imam al-Hujjah is five and he's an Imam, they accepted it immediately. If you believe in the Qur'an, you accept it. And if you follow the Imams before Imam al-Hujjah, then you will accept it. But then, from year 260, from year 260 until year 329 after Hijrah, the Imam, which was a period of around 70 years, during that period, the Imam was in the minor occultation. There are two types of ghaybas. There's the ghayb al-kubra, and there's the ghayb al-sughra. And this is something that Rasulullah spoke about. This is something that Imam al-Sadiq spoke about. Before the birth of the Imam. This is something that Amir al muminin he told the people about. This was something that everyone was prepared for. Everyone knew that this was going to happen. During that period, the Imam had nuwab. The Imam, the imam had sufara. He had ambassadors, which they would represent the Imam. They were the representatives of the Imam. People were connected with the Imam. They would write letters to the Imam. And the Imam would reply back in the letters. But then, after the year 329, with the death of the last one, with the death of the last one, Muhammad al-Sumari, then the Imam, Muhammad al-Sumari, he writes a letter to the Shia at that time. And he tells them that the ghayb al-Sughra has finished. And now be prepared for the ghaybat al-Kubra. Be prepared for the greater occultation. And this is something that Rasulullah had spoken about. This is something that all of the Imams, 
had prepared themselves and their Shias for. Imam Sadiq, one day, one of his companions, he says, I went in the room of Imam Sadiq, I saw the Imam crying. He's doing dua. He's crying and he says, Sayyidi, ghaybatuka nafat riqadi, wa dhayyakat alayya mihadi, wa abtazzat minni rahatu fuadi. He says, Oh my master, Imam Sadiq, the sixth Imam, he's speaking to the twelfth Imam. He says, Oh my master, Sayyidi ghaybatuka nafat riqadi. Oh my master, your ghaybah has taken away my rest. I cannot sleep when I think about what the Shias, what the followers of Ahlul Bayt will have to go through during the time of ghaybah. The Imams would cry and they would be worried about the followers of the Imam during the time of the Ghaybah. Now, my dear brothers and sisters, we are during the time of Ghaybah. What is our responsibility? What are our duties when we are living in a time where the Imam is not with us? Where we do not see the Imam? Do we have a responsibility? There is one group of people that say, no, we shouldn't do anything. We should just wait until the Imam comes and then we will do whatever he orders us to do. However, that is the wrong mentality. That is not the way to go about it. There are so many things that we can do. There are so many things that we should do. First of all, we should never stop believing in the Imam of our time. Just because I don't see the Imam, does that mean that he doesn't see me? Does that mean that he's not connected with me? Today, do you see the president? Although this president is helpless, can't do anything, but do you see the president? No, but he is still the president. Do you see your leaders? Do you have to see the leader at all times? No. But the leader fulfills his task. The leader fulfills his role. You don't have to see him. Just because you don't see the leader does not mean that he does not see you. In a letter, in a letter the, the Imam wrote during, during, to Shaykh al-Mufid. The Imam wrote to Shaykh al-Mufid. He tells him, you benefit from me during the time of the ghaybah, during the time of the occultation, just like you benefit from the sun on a cloudy day. When there's a cloudy day, you don't see the sun. But do you still receive benefits from the sun? Yes. In fact, if it was not for the sun, we would all die. If it was not for the sun, we would all perish. So we benefit and we are in need of the Imam. Just like we are in need of the sun. Allah says in the Quran, وَقُلْ اعْمَلُوا فَسَيَرَ اللَّهِ عَمَلَكُمْ وَرَسُولُهُ وَالْمُؤْمِنُونَ Act. Do good. Because Allah sees your actions. وَرَسُولُهُ your, The Prophet, he sees everything that you do according to this verse in the Quran. وَقُلْ اعْمَلُوا فَسَيَرَ اللَّهِ عَمَلَكُمْ وَرَسُولُهُ والمؤمنون and the believers according to the tafsir of this verse from the imams they say that the mu'minun that see your actions are the imams the rightful imams that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has chosen to lead us so the imams do see us and we have a responsibility we have a duty during the time of the ghaybah and those who believe during the time of the ghaybah those are the best of the believers, even better than the believers during the time of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi Of Rasulullah, according to the hadith of Rasulullah. One day the Prophet, he was standing with his Muslims, with the Muslims, and he tells them, Ya laytani qad laqeetu ikhwani, only if I can meet my brothers. So some of the Muslims, they tell him, aren't we your brothers? Aren't we the ones who you want to meet? Aren't we the ones who sacrificed? We went to war, we traveled, we migrated with you. The Prophet tells them, you are my companions, but I want to see my brothers. So they tell him, who are, who are your brothers? He tells them, the ones who believe in me and they have not seen me. You all saw my miracles. You all saw everything that I did. 
And there's a big difference with someone who saw the Prophet and believed in the Prophet and someone who believed the Prophet. They pray, they go to Hajj, they give khums, they give zakat, they do everything that they're supposed to do and they did not see the Prophet. This one, the one who believed without seeing their faith is much stronger. This person is a real faithful person because it's all based on faith. You believe. You surrender and you accept the Prophet the way it came to you, the way the story of the Prophet came to you. So those are the real believers, the ones who believe in the ghaib. Believing in the unseen, this is one of the tenets of our faith. In the first surah, the second chapter in the Qur'an, the second page of the Qur'an, Surah Al-Baqarah, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Alif, Lam, Meem, Thalika al-Kitab la rayba fihi hudan lil-Muttaqeen, Alif, Lam, Meem, this is a book for the Muttaqeen, this is a book for the pious. Who are those pious? Al-Ladheena yu'minuna bil-Ghayb, the ones who believe in the unseen. If you don't want to believe in the unseen, don't waste your time. If you don't want, if you're not ready to believe in the unseen, then you're just going to be wasting your time reading this book. You have to be prepared to believe in the unseen. And there are many things that are unseen, but we believe in them. Science, through the scientific method, we come and we see a pattern, then we come and we say, no, science proves that this. Just because I didn't see it, it's unseen, but science proves that it exists. Same with Allah, same with creation, same with all of our belief system. So believing in the unseen when it comes to Allah is one of the tenets of our faith and also when it comes to the Imam of our time. In one hadith, Imam Zain al-Abideen, he tells one of his companions by the name of Abu Khalid al-Kabuli. He was from Kabul. He tells him, Ya Aba Khalid, and this, is, this man was one of the most loyal disciples of Imam al-Baqir and Imam al-Sadiq alayhi salam. He was one of the strongest Shias. He tells him, Ya Aba Khalid, O oh Aba Khalid, inna ahl zaman ghaybatih, the people during the time of the ghaybah, the people during the time of the ghaybah of the Imam, al-qailuna bi imamatih, the ones who accept his imamah, al-muntadhiruna li dhuhurih, the ones who are anxiously and patiently waiting for the arrival of the Imam. Afdal Ahl Kulli Zaman. Those people are better than all people from all the Zamans, all the time. Those people that believe in the Imam and accept the Imam during the time of the Ghaybah, those people are better than all of the people. And then he says, لِأَنَّ اللَّهَ تَعَالَى ذِكْرُهُ أَعْطَاهُمْ مِنَ الْعُقُولِ وَالْأَفْهَامِ وَالْمَعْرِفَةِ مَا صَارَتْ بِهِ الْغَيْبَةِ عِنْدَهُمْ بِمَنْزِلَةِ الْمُشَاهَدَةِ Because Allah gave them the brains and the heart and the intellect and the faith that makes their غيبة غيبة is unseen, it became like the مشاهدة, it became like they're seeing. Their faith is so strong in the Imam, it's as if they are seeing the Imam. And then he tells, وَجَعَلَهُمْ فِي ذَلِكَ الزَّمَانِ And they are during that time, بِمَنْزِلَةِ الْمُجَاهِدِينَ بَيْنَ يَدَيْ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ You will get the thawab of those who did jihad with the Prophet. Those who stood in Badr and Uhud and Hunayn. You will get the thawab if you believe in the Imam and you accept the Imam with sincerity. You will get the thawab of those who did jihad with Rasulullah, with the safe, with the sword. أولئك المخلصون حقا وشيعتنا صدقا والدعاة إلى دين الله سرا وجهرا. Those are the real مخلصون, the ones with ikhlas. Those are the real believers. And those are the ones that call for Allah in secret and in public. So what do we have to do to be in that category? What do we have to do to be sincere Shi'as of the Ahlul Bayt? What do we have to do to be sincere Shi'as of the Imam of our time? There are several things that we should do to strengthen our faith. And these days, during the days of Muharram, when we see the companions of Imam al Hussein, how they gave everything, everything they offered it in the way of the Imam of their time. On the day of Ashura, they come and they were laughing. They were smiling. Tomorrow they're going to be killed. They were laughing. 
And then one of them, Imam al Husseini tells them to leave. One of them, he says, Ya Aba Abdullah, if I were to be cut, cut up into pieces and burned, and this happens to me 70 times, I would do it again for you. Those are the real believers. This is why 1400 years, 1300 years later, we sit and we remember the companions of Imam al Hussein. Maybe I can't be like Imam al Hussein. Maybe I can't be like the Imams. But maybe I could be like the slave in the caravan of Imam al Hussein. Maybe I could be like the woman that was standing with Zainab, preserving her hijab in the most difficult time. Maybe I could be like the young child who defended and gave all that he had for Imam al Hussein. But I could do that for the Imam of my time. Just because Imam al Hussein was killed doesn't mean that I don't have another opportunity to sacrifice for the Imam of my time. So what should we do? One of the most important things that will strengthen our relationship with the Imam of our time is that we have to accept and acknowledge the Imam in the way that he is and that is that he is alive. Today many of us, we treat the Imam, Imam al-Mahdi, the same as Imam al-Hussein. We treat Imam al-Mahdi the same as Amir al-Mu'mineen. And there's a big difference. One of them has passed away and the other is alive. Do I treat the Imam as if he is alive? Do I treat the Imam as if he could see me anytime? The moment I begin to perceive the Imam, that he is alive and he could see me and he is with us and he may be attending our majlis then my actions will be very different. Then my akhlaq will be very different. Then my salah will be very different. Then everything will change. The whole calculation will change. And this is why the Imams of the Ahlul Bayt, they want us to accept the Imam the way he is. He is alive. This is why when you say salam to the Imam in Ziyarat Al Yasin, you say As-salamu alayka hina taqoom, As-salamu alayka hina taq'ud, As-salamu alayka hina taqra'u wa tubayyan, As-salamu alayka hina tusalli. Peace be upon you while you are praying. Peace be upon you while you are standing. Peace be upon you while you sit. Peace be upon you while you do tahleel. While you're doing qunut, while you're praying. What is this? This is just like a mother when her son is out. She is worried. What is my son doing? How is my son? Did my son eat? Did my son drink? How is he sleeping? How is he right now? Do we think of the imam in that way? Do we perceive the Imam? Are we wondering, is the Imam on our mind in that way? In Dua and Nudba, the Dua that is recited on the day of Jum'ah, the day of Friday, which is the day of the Imam, and which is the day that the Imam will reveal himself to the world. One part of the Dua, the Imam says, Layta shi'ri ayna staqarrat bikan nawa. Abi ardhin, bal ayyu ardhin taqilluka aw thara. Abi radwa aw gayriha amdhi tuwa. Azizun alayya an ara al khalqa wa la tura. Wa la asma'u lak. He says, it breaks my heart that I see everyone, but I can't see the Imam of my time. It's really heartbreaking that I cannot connect with the Imam of my time. I cannot hear the voice of the Imam of my time. The day of Eid comes, the holidays come, we celebrate our holidays with one another, but our Imam is missing and it's as if we have not it's as if we are not missing our Imam. We live our lives very normal. We don't think of the Imam enough. This is what the du'as of the Ahlul Bayt, this is what the ziyarah of the Imam does to you. Try to remember the Imam. If you don't remember the Imam every day, try to remember him at least once a week on the Friday. Try to build a bond with the Imam of your time. This is one. Second, we must prepare ourselves for the arrival of the Imam. According to the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa He says, Min afdal a'mal ummati 
Intidhar al-Faraj. He says, the best from the best actions and deeds of my ummah is to wait for the Faraj of the Imam. How should we wait? Should I just sit and look at my watch and wait? Of course not. We wait by actively waiting, by preparing, by setting the atmosphere, by supporting the Muslim community, by preparing for the government of the Imam when he comes, by preparing myself. You know, some people, when they have to play a sport, they have to run a marathon, they start two months, three months before that, they start jogging and practicing and getting ready for a sport. Are we ready when the Imam comes? Are we ready when the Imam comes and he gives me a very difficult responsibility? Am I going to be ready to sacrifice? Am I going to be ready? Is, are my children ready? Is my family ready? Are my, is my community ready? Actively waiting means that we have to set the environment. We have to prepare. We have to make sure that we are all ready. I have to make sure that my children know how to pray God and modesty. I have to make sure that I'm following all of the rules of Allah. This is how we prepare for the Imam of our time. By establishing, by preparing for the Imam. Supporting institutions like this. Placing your children in an Islamic school. So that they grow up learning about their Imam. They grow up knowing how to read the Quran. They grow up knowing how to pray. Not, you see someone coming when they're 40 years old and this person doesn't know anything. Alaykum <laughs> salam wa rahmatullah. The third point. The first was that we have to build a relationship. Our perception of the imam should be that he is alive. The second, we have to prepare. And third, we should do dua. Ask Allah. Ask Allah to hasten the reappearance of the imam. Allah says in the Quran, أَمَّنْ يُجِيبُ الْمُضْطَرِ إِذَا دَعَاهُ وَيَكْشِفُ السُّوءُ What does this verse mean? Many times we read it, but we don't even know what it means. أَمَّنْ يُجِيبُ الْمُضْطَرِ Oh, he who answers the distressed, the one who is, who is مُضْطَر, the one who is distressed, the one who is desperate. When I ask Allah, am I desperate? Many times, no. It's become a ritual. And we go home. Am I desperate when I ask Allah? When I have a sick person in my family? Am I, do I really believe that it is Allah that can cure the sick person? If I really believe, then Allah will answer. Because Allah says, Oh, he who answers the distressed. I have to believe that Allah answers and I have to be distressed. If I ask. I have to also ask. So here, the ziyarah of the Imam in Dua al Nudbah, Ain al Muftar al Ladi Yujabu Ida Da'a. Where is the Muftar? Where is the one who is distressed that Allah answers his dua? When the Imam asks Allah, Allah will answer his dua. So we have to also ask Allah. Qala Abu Abdullah, Imam Sadiq alayhi salam, he says, he tells his companions, his Shi'as, he tells them, Satusibkum shubha, fatabkun bila alamin yura wala imami huda, la yanju minha illa man da'a bidu'a il gharik. He tells his Shi'as that you will go through a shubha, you will go through a time of trials and difficulties, and many people will lose their faith. Many people will turn and have doubt in the Imam. And then he says, لا ينجو منها. No one will be saved except those who do dua al gharik The ones who do the dua of the gharik Gharik means the one who is drowning. The one who is drowning. What does that mean? When you're drowning, you're desperate. There's no one more desperate than the one who is drowning, trying to hold on to life. لا ينجو منها إلا من دعا بدعاء الغريق. Be desperate when you ask Allah. And then they tell the Imam, what is this dua? How do we do this dua? 
He tells them, you say, Ya Allah, Ya Rahman, Ya Rahim, Ya Muqallib Al-Qulub, Thabbit Qalbi Ala Deenik. This is Dua Al-Gharik. Ya Allah, Ya Rahman, Ya Rahim, Ya Muqallib Al-Qulub, the one who changes the hearts. Thabbit Qalbi, make my heart have a strong foundation on your faith, on the faith in believing in Allah. This is a Dua. And another Dua, Imam al-Sadiq, he tells one of his companions by the name of Zurara, Zurara ibn A'yun, one of the most important companions of the Imam, who much of the hadith that we have from the Imam is narrated from this man, Zurara ibn A'yun. The Imam tells him, you have to do this dua, you have to say, Allahumma arrifni nafsak. Oh Allah, help me, help me be introduced to you. Allahumma arrifni nafsak. فَإِنَّكَ إِنْ لَمْ تُعَرِّفْنِي نَفْسَكْ لَمْ أَعْرِفْ نَبِيَّكَ Because if I don't know you, then I will not know your Prophet. اللهم عرفني رسولك Oh Allah, let me have a strong relationship with the Prophet. فَإِنَّكَ إِنْ لَمْ تُعَرِّفْنِي رَسُولَكْ لَمْ أَعْرِفْ حُجَّتَكَ Because if I don't know the Prophet, then I will not know the Hujjah. After the Prophet, اللهم عرفني حجتك فإنك إن لم تعرفني حجتك ظللت عن ديني. Oh Allah, introduce me. Help me have a strong relationship with the Hujjah, the Imam of our time. Because if I don't have a relationship with my Hujjah, ظللت عن ديني. My religion will go astray. I will go astray from my religion. This is a dua that we have to make. The fourth point and the final point is that we should not lose hope. We have to always have hope, always have faith. There is always light at the end of the tunnel. There is always a way out of every problem. As long as Allah is around and Allah is always around, don't ever lose hope, don't ever lose faith. Allah says in the Quran, وَذَنُّونِ إِذْ ذَهَبَ مُغَاضِبًا فَظَنَّ أَنْ لَنْ نَقْدِرَ عَلَيْهِ فَنَادَى فِي الظُّلُمَاتِ He called in the worst scenario. Yunus, Prophet Yunus, he was placed in the worst situation. He was in the stomach of the well, in the ocean, in the darkness of the night. But he called out Allah in that situation. فَنَادَى فِي الظُّلُمَاتِ أَنْ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا أَنْتْ سُبْحَانَكَ إِنِّي كُنْتُ مِنَ الظَّالِمِينَ Immediately Allah says, فَاسْتَجَبْنَا لَهُ We answered him. In the worst situation possible, he asks Allah, Allah answers him. And it is only Allah that can relieve us from all of the pain that we are going through. Today the Muslim Ummah as a whole and humanity in general is going through so much pain, so much struggles, so much difficulty. Where life has become very difficult to live. But this is the time that we should have the strongest faith and hope in the Imam. Because he will come at the end of time when life is unlivable anymore. Allah says in the Quran, قُلْ أَرَأَيْتُمْ إِنْ أَصْبَحَ مَاءُكُمْ غَوْرًا فَمَنْ يَأْتِيكُمْ بِمَاءٍ مَعِينٍ Allah says, if your water has become undrinkable, the water is too deep that you cannot take the water anymore, who is the one that gives you water? Isn't it Allah that gives us water? The tafsir of this verse, the verses of the Qur'an, they have tafsir and they have ta'wil. Ta'wil is the more precise definition. The ta'wil, the Imam says, قُلْ أَرَأَيْتُمْ إِنْ أَصْبَحَ مَاءُكُمْ غَوْرًا If your water, if you cannot reach your water, this is referring to life. If life is unlivable, who is going to come and make life livable once again? This is Imam Al-Hujjah, عَجَّلَ اللَّهِ تَعَالَى فَرَجُهُ الشَّرِيفِ صَلُّوا عَلَى مُحَمَّدْ وَآلِهِ So this is why we should do dua. This is why we should always ask Allah, Allahumma inna nargabu ilayka fi dawlatin kareemah, tu'izzu biha al-islam wa ahlah, wa tudhillu biha al-nifaq wa ahlah. Ask Allah for a government 
that will respect the rules and the laws of Allah. Ask Allah for the government of the Imam, for him to come. And this is, some people they come and they say, don't talk about this. This is something that will happen in a long time. But Allah says in the Quran, إِنَّهُمْ يَرَوْنَهُ بَعِيدًا وَنَرَاهُ قَرِيبًا The kuffar, the munafiqeen, they lose hope in Allah. They say this is something that will happen in such a long time. But we the mu'mineen, نَرَاهُ قَرِيبًا We see that this is something that is close and will happen very soon. Don't, have faith, don't lose faith. Rasulullah, he says in a hadith, Al-Mahdi minna, Al-Mahdi minna ahl al-bayt, yuslihu Allah amrahu fi layla. You might see that life is so difficult. You might look, you watch the news, you read the news and you see that nothing's going to make the situation better. But then you remember that you have an imam who is just waiting for the permission of Allah. And Rasulullah, he says, the Mahdi is from my children. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will change his matters within one night. Within one night, Allah will give him permission to reveal himself. So the difference between oppression and injustice and tyranny, and the next day, a establishing of the justice is just one night. That night could be tonight. That night could be this week. That night could be this month. Am I ready? The Imam, Imam Sadiq, he tells his companions, Musa, he went, to his, he went to bring fire for his family and he came back as a prophet. He went to bring fire and he came back as a prophet of Allah. Allah changes his situation within one night. And this can also happen with the Imam of our time. Musa, he came, within one night he became a prophet and he was sent to Bani Israel and he saved Bani Israel from the Pharaoh of their time who was punishing them and torturing them. The Imam will also come very soon. Now, my dear brothers and sisters, when the Imam appears, when the Imam reveals himself, what is he going to do? According to the Hadith, the first thing that he does after he declares himself, he calls out, Ala ya ahla al-alam, inna jaddi al-Husayn qataluhu atshana. The first thing that he does is he begins crying and weeping for Imam al-Husayn alayhi salam. The Imam, his heart is bleeding for his grandfather, Imam al Hussein. He is the only one who will take revenge for, the, for his grandfather, Imam al Hussein. Today you see over the dome of Aba Abdullah, why is there a red flag over the dome of Imam al Hussein? All of the other Imams, they have a different color flag, a green flag or a different color. Why does Imam al Hussein have a, the Arabs that if someone has been killed, someone has been oppressed, and no one has taken revenge for that person, they leave a red flag over that house. They leave, they leave a red flag over that dome. That means that my heart is still bleeding, and someone will, is going to come and seek revenge for Imam al Hussein. And the only one that will seek revenge for his grandfather, Aba Abdullah, is Al Mahdi Al Muntadar. The only one that will come so when he reveals himself he begins calling oh people of the universe oh people of the world do you know that my grandfather Hussein was killed thirsty they didn't give him a drop of of water before killing him <laughs> Oh people, my grandfather was not killed like a normal person. After killing him, they ripped off his clothes from his body. Inna 
جد الحسين سحقوه عدوانا Oh people, oh people, my grandfather, after they killed him, they called ten men with their horses and they began to stomp over the body of Abba Abdullah. This is why my heart is broken for my grandfather. And this is why we call the Imam Abba Saleh. التماس دعاء هر کجا رفتی یاد ما هم باش عبا صالح التماس دعاء هر کجا رفتی یاد ما هم باش نجف رفتی کربلا رفتی کازمین رفتی سامرا رفتی یاد ما هم باش بقی رفتی جم کران رفتی یاد ما هم باش کنار قبر ابو الفضل با وفا رفتی یاد ما هم باش ای ابا صالح ای ابا صالح Tonight we remember the companions of Imam Al Hussein and we ask Allah that He makes us companions of the Imam of our time. We ask Allah that He makes us like the companions of Imam Al Hussein who sacrificed and knew who the Imam of their time was. Those companions who the Imam says, Inni la a'lam ashaban awfa wa la khayran min ashabi. I don't know any companions more loyal than my own companions. They come to the Imam on the day of Ashura. One after the other, they go and they fight for the Imam. Starting with Habib, the old man, the 90-year-old man, to even the children, they would come to Imam al Hussein and they would ask to fight in the way of Imam al Hussein. One of those men who came to, one of those young who came to fight for the Imam was a young child. They say in the books, غُلَامٌ قُتِلَ أَبَاهُ بِالْمَعْرَكَةِ A young man whose father was killed in the battlefield. This man, this young child, he came carrying his sword. He was dressed in the armor. Imam al Hussein. he sees him, he comes, he asks permission to fight for Imam al Hussein. Imam al Hussein says, send him back. His father was just killed. We don't want to break his mother's heart. This young child, he cries to Imam al Hussein and he tells him, Ya Aba Abdullah, Inna Ummi hiya allati albasatni la'matu harbi. Oh Aba Abdullah, you are worried about my mother. It is my mother who sent me to be with you. It is my mother who says, I want you to sacrifice yourself for Abba Abdullah. Imam Al Hussein, he sent the young man back. Then his mother, she comes holding his hand. She tells him, Ya Abba Abdullah, كيف تثكل أمك الزهراء بولدها ولا أثكل بولدي. How can I stand in front of Fatima Zahra? She loses her son and I don't lose my son. Let my son go. This young child, he goes out in the battlefield. He calls out, Amiri Hussein wa Ni'm al-Amir. Surur fu'ad al-Bashir al-Nadir. Ali wa 
فاطمة والدا فهل تعلمون له من نظير they kill him and then they throw his head towards the camp his mother she goes she grabs the head of her son and she tells him oh my dear son thank you now I can stand in front of Fatima on the day of judgment there was another man another couple this was a Christian man who had just converted to Islam and he had just gotten married a man by the name of Wahab al-Kalbi this man on the day of Ashura his mother she came and she told him oh Wahab I want you to go and fight for Imam al Hussein." His wife on one side, she tells him, Ya Wahab, we just got married. Why do you want to leave me right now? I will become a widow. The Wahab, he didn't care. He wanted to go and fight. But his wife was not happy. So he goes and he fights. Then all of a sudden, he hears his wife telling him, Ya Wahab, qatil duna tayyibin, abna tayyibin. Oh Wahab, fight courageously. Defend Aba Abdul. So he comes back to his wife. He tells her just a moment ago, you were telling me not to go. Now you are telling me to fight. What has changed you? She tells him, Ya Wahab, la talumni, inna wa'iyat al-Husayn qatta'at niyata qalbi. Oh Wahab, don't blame me. I saw Hussein standing by the tent, calling out, ala hal min nasirin yansuruna. Ala هل من معين يعيننا ألا هل من ذاب يذب عن حرم رسول الله after all the companions were killed, Imam al Hussein he stood over the bodies. He began to call them one by one, but there was no answer. Ya Abtal al Safa wa Ya Fursan al Hayja, an yamun antum arjukum tantabihun, am halat bainakum wa bain imamikum. Why is it that you don't answer me? Why is it that you have left? me and then he answers he says no you did all that you had to do but you were killed for my sake fa inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un nas'aluka allahumma wa nad'uk bismika al-azim al-a'zam al-a'z al-ajal al-akram ya allah يا الله يا رحمن يا رحيم يا مقلب القلوب ثبت قلوبنا على دينك اللهم اغفر للمؤمنين والمؤمنات الأحياء منهم والأموات تابع اللهم بيننا وبينهم بالخيرات إنك مجيب الدعوات إنك غافر الخطيئات إنك ماح السيئات إنك على كل شيء قدير وصلى الله على Muhammad wa ala alihi al-tahirin. Everyone stand for the Imam of our time. Allahumma kulli waliyika al-hujjat ibn al-Hasan. Salawatuka alayhi wa ala abaih fi hadhi al-sa'a wa fi kulli وليا وحافظا وقائدا وناصرا ودليلا وعينا حتى تسكنه أرضك طوعا وتمتعه فيها طويلا برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين وإلى أرواح المؤمنين والمؤمنات الفاتحة تسبقها الصلاة على محمد وآل محمد